You guys faced the Ravens last year in Tampa, right? How much did their defense change without some of those key pieces that left in the offseason? Well, schematically, not a lot. You know, Coach Martindale's still there and does a great job. So that hasn't changed. But uh, obviously, without Suggs, Sedaria Smith, and Mosley, it's changed. Some other guys have they got McPhee back. So he's a guy you've got to keep an eye on. He's twitchy, can do some things off the edge. So to me, they're the same. They, you know, they lost Weddle, but they brought in Earl Thomas. So uh, they've got really good personnel and do a really good job schematically. So maybe a little bit, but not enough to to really talk enough about. Uh, can you explain how the, how the process works and how you're going to decide what's going to get called at the beginning of a game and how many of those plays might be scripted in advance? Oh, I'm not going to get into that in terms of, I mean, we how we do things, how we collectively do things. And that's not anything there's no reason to get into that. I mean, everywhere I've been, we do it collectively as a staff, and we move forward from there. What signs do you see that um, the offense is improving? Well, signs that we're improving. I think that that would be saying that we've struggled, so I won't get into that. But I think we've run the ball fairly well. I don't think that's been an issue uh, most of the time. You know, to me, it's it's a it's a matter of of collectively putting plays together and stacking them. That's how you become consistent. And at times we do that, and at times we don't do that. And when we do that, we're a pretty good football team offensively. That's what we control. When we stack plays, don't get behind the chains with penalties, lost yardage plays that puts you in a tough spot. So I think that's probably the, the number one thing you've got to do to be more consistent. Well, when, when will you say are you saying the offense isn't struggling? Yeah, I think five. Offensive touchdowns in three games. Well, again, when you say struggling, then you're asking me to pinpoint, you know, where we can be better. Well, that's everywhere. I mean, if you say obviously we're not satisfied with where we're at offensively, so obviously we've got to coach better, we've got to play better. So that's that's just the start of it. That's a simple answer to it. And eternally, we've got to be better to be more consistent. That's that's the bottom line. This week, Freddie said. Hey. I know it's only three games with a small sample size, but how do you get Baker back to the Baker that we saw in the second half of the season? Well, again, I wasn't here, so you're, you're speaking to something that I, that I don't know. And again, I don't mean that negatively. I, I can only speak to the three games I've been here. And again, as I would refer back to what I just said, is we've got to collectively do things better, starting with us, and then the players have to be able to execute it on the field. Um, again, with pre-snap penalties, we've had that happen. We had a lot of them two weeks, three weeks ago. Then this past week, we had four of them. Um, we've got to consistently do things better in practice, preparing up to practice, practice, and then that will carry over to the field. What came into your decision? I think Nick Chubb was like again, he's got 70 plays, like almost he was on, on the field the entire time. Why did you guys use him more this past week than maybe in some of the previous games? And what did you see in his performance? This past week. Well, that's that's not normal. But moving forward, we would love to have a, you know, with any position when you have guys up to uh, to be able to get them in the game and contribute. Said this week, Baker said it. I, I think Odell said it yesterday. Um, you guys are close to sustaining those drives uh, more often. Um, you know, what is going to be the key to, to 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 consistently, you know, putting together the, the drives instead of you know, like you said, like the flashes here and there where you're. I know I'm going to say the exact same thing. We've got to scheme it better. We've got to practice it better. And then we've got to take what we do on the practice field to the game. And it's I know that's really that is it. I don't know what else to say. I mean, I will say that I've said it since I started coaching, and then I'll say it till I decide not to coach any longer. It's the plan that we come up with and then how we – uh, go about during the week of getting the correct looks, our guys being able to execute it then, and then gaining confidence from that, and then being able to carry that over to Sunday. And then obviously we've got to go out there and do it. We've it's got. Long, it's a long season. Um, you know, do you feel like uh, you're going to get there uh, sooner than later? Um, because it's only been three games. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot of time left for you to, to figure these things out. And there are some new pieces. 
No, all true. All true, and that's our job. I mean, our job is to figure that out. I mean, that is what we're paid to do. I mean, we're paid to figure it out and utilize the talent that we have and carry that over to the field. And it's frustrating when you don't. I mean, there, there's no way around it. I mean, it's just uh, – but again, um, it's never one thing. If it was one thing, you'd, you'd be fighting like hell to correct that one thing. But there's more things than just that. So ultimately, it, it falls on us as coaches at the start and then what we do in practice and then taking it to the field. Talks a lot about being doubled all the time uh, on almost every single play. And um, what's the challenge for you in trying to overcome that, work around that, and, and not let that? Well, teams are teams are aware when you have a dynamic receiver. You know, we had Mike Evans in in Tampa, and teams are aware of their skill set, so they're going to scheme towards that either hint of safety or cloud to a particular player. So you have just, again, you've got to be able to find ways to get him the ball, at times move him around, at times schematically against certain coverages, even when they cloud, that allows you to get him the ball. And then there's more times than you'd think where he singled up and uh, we've got to find a way to get him the ball. And that's, that's what you try to do. Um, sometimes it's, uh, you know, he singled up your run in the football. Sometimes it's a situational thing. So, but obviously, when you have a really good player, you're trying to get him the football. That's that's obvious. Before you came in, Jake mentioned to me that no team has gone empty inside the five until you guys did this year. Um, was it the Rams something that uh, made that a great matchup? And to do it uh, pretty much four plays in a row, what prompted that strategy? Um. Again, I'm not going to really get into our game planning. That's nothing that's uh, going to help us down the road as to why we did what we did. We just obviously thought that would give us the best chance to get in. Can I ask a follow up? The fact that you have no lead blocker on this team right now, does that affect your game planning and strategy? Well, sure it does, but that isn't. Um, a reason why we can't execute better. But you're right, if you don't have a fullback, that does limit certain things. I mean, we've, we're have we working Farrow into that role a little bit, but obviously it's uh, it's got nothing to do with the way we've executed up till this point. When you mentioned carry it over from the practice field to the game, so does that mean things are looking smooth, going smoothly out there in practice? No, that's that's not really what I said, but there there is something to that. I mean, but um, sometimes it goes smoothly in practice and it doesn't end up in the game because you're not going against the best in the world, if that makes sense. So sometimes what looks good in practice doesn't end up carrying over to the game. Um, a play call that uh, that you have dialed up and then all of a sudden you jump off sides and you go to a different call and you don't get back to that. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things that go in it or something that doesn't look as well that we just didn't do as well in practice. You only have so many reps and, and down the road is – you're really good at what you do over and over and over again. That's true in any, everything. We just have to continue to do certain things over and over and build an identity of who we are. Improvisation is part of Baker's game. How have you seen him kind of balance when he should be leaving the pack as opposed to sticking in and trying to make the throws? Have you seen him get out of there too early sometimes? Well, again, it's, uh, it's hard to speak for him in terms of what he sees, in terms of what's in front of him. And I don't mean that, I don't mean seeing in terms of protection wise, just what he sees, or is there leakage? Is there a route that, you know, ends up not in a particular position? So, um, again, he's, I think he's a guy that's been good in the pocket, but he's also a guy that's been elite when he does escape. So, again, a guy with that kind of ability and trying to make a play at times ends up escaping. You know, and getting outside the pocket, trying to make a play. And again, there's a number of reasons. Number of reasons it goes it goes into that. If he takes off, whenever he feels it's best, you are okay with him getting outside and trying to? Well, play? I don't know about that. You left that open ended. Of, you know, whenever he feels best is a little bit of a stretch, I would say. But again, he's the one that has to play the position. I'm not out there playing it. So again, are there times with every quarterback that we've ever been around where you'd like them to hang in the pocket long? Of course. There's times when they hang in the pocket and you go, God, I wish they would could escape for God's sakes. So that's that's not it's not an easy answer. It's you know, there's times any quarterback you want him to be in the pocket longer, and there's times where you'd, you'd go, Wow, it'd be great if he could escape and make some plays on the move. 
group of tight ends, first game without David, at least starting a game? They were fine. Again, um, you know, Farrow's going to continue to improve. We got Ricky up a little bit, get him going. Demetrius Harris has been steady all along. We probably could use more from him and need to utilize it more uh, in the run game and pass game. What's the biggest law when you don't have David there? What is the biggest thing that, that, that you have to, those guys have to do to try to, uh, try to help minimize his, his loss? Well, David is uh, you know, a guy that can stretch the field. He's done that before here, plays in the red zone that you, we've seen him make. The other thing what ends up happening is, is when you lose a player that's a starter, is that all through camp, and David was a little dinged up starting, but those guys take a lot of reps. So when you lose a player that, um, that's a starter, he's taken whatever percentage of the reps you've had up until that point. So everybody else is playing a little bit of catch up. That also, um, you know, like any position. But uh, the other guys we have have talent. That's why they're in the NFL. We just got to, again, keep bringing them along and utilizing their skill set to the best of their ability. Two more. Uh, Justin McCray's game. Oh, he's been fine. I mean, he's he's played his he's. I mean, for a guy that came in here, whatever it was, a couple, few weeks ago, uh, he's played well. I mean, he you know as well as you could be expected. That hasn't been with us and learning the system and battling. So again, that that hasn't been the reason. That, you know, at times he's going to get beat like all of our players. He's no different than any of our players or any of our uh, players that are going to get covered or you're going to you're going to times lose a one-on-one battle. But he's. Uh, We've been very, we've been pleased with him.